Hello there, welcome to Fahad's tutorial and this class is about Pascal's law. So you already studied about uh, pressure, density and the pressure on liquid because in SSC physics there is a chapter which is titled at pressure and state of matter. So both in English version and O level, uh, this, this concept is very very important in physics because uh, when we understand the Pascal's law, we also can understand how force is being multiplied through this process and also we need to know about hydraulic press or Bravo's press. So the, the statement of the Pascal's law is written here and uh, before going to explain it, I want to say something very simply that you know already that what is actually pressure. So we know that pressure is P, as you know that pressure is the force implied vertically in a single unit of area. So we can say that P is equal F by A. You know it already and the unit of pressure is Pascal. So the Pascal is force, you know the unit of force is Newton and the unit of area, the cross-sectional area is meter square. So Newton per meter square is Pascal. So you know it already that pressure is equal force upon area so this is very important to remember so what is Pascal's law if I say that external pressure applied very important we need to understand the concept clearly that when an external pressure applied to any portion of a liquid or a gas so this law is only only applicable in case of gas and liquid so if any external pressure is applied to any portion of a liquid or a gas enclosed that is very important enclosed in a container so this figure might be similar for you that I, what I am going to explain you you might have some idea so container is equally equally transmitted so that is very important when an external pressure is applied to any liquid or gas enclosed in a container that will equally transmit it to everywhere so equally transmitted in all directions in the liquid or the gas that is the first part of the Pascal's law without any trace of diminutions and acts perpendicularly perpendicularly it means that it means that if this is a surface then it will work perpendicularly so the force will act perpendicularly so the main part of Pascal's that if any external pressure pressure applied to any portion of liquid or gas enclosed in a container is equally transmitted in all directions in the liquid or the gas without that is very important without any trace of diminutions it means that pressure would be equal in all cases pressure won't change that means according to Pascal's law if any external pressure is applied to any part of the liquid or gas pressure won't change so there is no change of a trace of diminutions and acts perpendicularly on the surface of the container in contact with the liquid or gas so these figures I, I'll explain it like that what is the internal thing of Pascal's law? So, suppose this is a container enclosed with water. So, inside there is water, and there are four pistons placed in the four corner of the circular container. So, there is a piston which is actually think thus the cross sectional area of this piston is one centimeter square. Suppose. And if you think, suppose this cross-sectional area of this piston is 2 cm square and here is actually 3 cm square and suppose this one 4 cm square. Okay, so in reality what's going on? So all this piston can move like syringe, so it can move, so all the piston are free and but this is actually enclosed with water so right now what will happen so if any external force applied to this piston suppose this is A, B, C and D 
if one newton one newton and for 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 the specification we can actually think about meter square in case of centimeter so that it will be easier for you to understand suppose one newton applied to one meter square piston so in a piston one newton were applied to one meter square area so usually it would be one pascal you know it from p equal f by a but when it will be applied to this container of the water then it will be distributed equally to everywhere without any trace of diminution it means that the pressure won't change the pressure will remain same so it will definitely work here like this it will definitely work here like this here like this and here like this so perpendicularly to all piston so here the surface the the cross sectional area is 2 meter square so if i say that pressure won't change so in b piston we can say that this is 2 meter square accordingly 2 meter square so if it's 1 pascal if I say that the pascal won't change then it should be 2 newton and in case of C piston if it is 3 meter square and if it is 1 pascal it should be 3 newton and in case of D piston it should be 4 newton upon 4 meter square to make it 1 pascal so what is C the applied force was 1 newton only 1 newton only in 1 meter square cross sectional area and that is why it is 1 pascal I just thought it 1 meter square because of making it easier and understandable in this case we got 4 newton I mean we applied 1 newton force upon a piston and through this d piston 4 newton force is exerted because of because of according to Pascal's law the pressure the pressure it, it, ha, it, it, it should be without any trace of diminution that means the pressure should remain same in all pistons so 1 newton were applied but we got 4 newton to exert it and that is why that is why according to Pascal's law force multiplication is going on force multiplication will happen and that is the starting of new understanding or new concept that according to Pascal's law if we use liquid through the hydraulic press we can have more force uh, 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 among, among like if we have uh, two different pistons I will explain it later on so force multiplication is that that we are giving less amount of effort but we are having more efficiency so in this case it's it's actually the applications of using hydraulic press so in this piston a piston b piston c and piston d all all pistons will have one pascal because according to these things because if if we got like two newton or three newton if it is 3 newton upon 1 meter square then it will be 3 pascal so making it 3 pascal upon 2 meter square it should be 6 newton and it would be 3 pascal and if it is 3 pascal make it 3 pascal if it is 3 meter square it should be 9 newton and here it would be 12 newton so we see that we are putting 3 pascal but 12 newton is exerted because of what because of because of you put at 3 newton but you are getting 12 newton that means four times greater as because the cross-sectional area of piston a and the cross-sectional area of piston d so the cross-sectional area of piston d is four times greater than piston A and that is why the amount of force is applied in piston A and the piston D should be four times greater and that is why this is force multiplication process 
So if I explain you more in detail, we need to think two different um, two different piston again. Suppose this one is uh, two different piston here. Suppose this one is connected through this force and it's still like this. And there is a piston and this is a bigger one. Suppose this is a bigger cylinder and this is the smaller one. Smaller one, this is a piston and this is also a piston. And suppose this is cylinder 1 which is actually C1 and this is cylinder 2 and this both cylinder is filled with water. So if it is filled with water, it means it's inserted and enclosed with the water in both cases. So if this scenario is happening and there is a piston attached with the smaller one and piston attached in the bigger one. So what's going on? If I say that the cross-sectional area of piston 1 or the cylinder 1 is A1 and the cross-sectional area of this cylinder is A2 and if I say that the force applied here is F1 and force exerted here is F2, then what is the equation? The equation is, suppose in this, in this piston, I mean the cylinder 1, F1 amount of force is applied in A1, uh, a cross-sectional area. So, we know that the pressure will come here and then it will be distributed to everywhere and that is why F2 will be exerted through this cylinder. And now, I think P is the pressure, is the force upon the cross-sectional area. So if P is equal F1 by A1, so according to this law we can say that if P equal F by A, then we can say that F equal P times A. Okay, so according to Pascal's law, if the pressure is going on here, it will never change. So P won't change. So in C1, things will be here. And in C2, what's going on? If we say that the exerted force is F2 is equal pressure will not change upon the cross-sectional area of cylinder 2. So that what will happen if 2 is equal P is equal F1 by A1 will be applied here F1 by A1 times A2 and then we will get a new equation which is actually we can say that F2 by F1 is equal A2 by A1 and this is the equation of of the Pascal's law when in case of force multiplication process. How it will happen? I am giving you a very simple idea that suppose the cross sectional area here is 2 meter square and here 200 meter square very simply. So you can see that this is 100 times bigger than this one. So this is 2 meter square and this is 200 meter square. So the cross-sectional area of cylinder 2 is 100 times bigger than this one. So now if you put here 2 Newton amount of force, you will have, you will have 200 Newton force base of it. As because according to Pascal's law, the pressure will not change. So pressure remains same. So the pressure would be here at least 2 Newton upon 2 meter square is 1 Pascal as because P is equal F by A so if you divide 2 Newton by 2 meter square it would be 2 Pascal and here again same the Pascal is same because if you divide 200 by 200 it will be 1 Pascal so according to Pascal's law again that 
main thing is that if you apply external force on enclosed water, I mean liquid or gas, the pressure will not change and without any trace of diminution, it will act perpendicularly to the all surface and the amount of pressure will not change. So, we can say that in C1, I mean the number, uh, cylinder number 1, the pressure is F1 by A1 and in cylinder number 2, it's F2 by F1. So, we can have a relationship that F2 by F1 equal A2 by A1. So, A2 is the bigger cylinder and A1 is the smaller cylinder. So, we can use it F2 by F1 equal A2 by A1 in our next level mathematical problem solving technique so in case of hydraulic uh, hydraulic pressure in case of Brahma's pressure when there is something about Pascal's law and we need to use this equation we need to think that the cylinder one force and the cylinder two force I mean in the bigger one as there is a bigger cross-sectional area force will be bigger and that is why this force will be multiplied and that's why this is force multiplication process. So I hope you understand Pascal's law, you understand this concept and of course you understand this one because it's written on your book and also when you understand this, it would be easier for you to do some mathematical problems and you will feel better on your question paper when you see any mathematical problems related to Pascal's law or even force multiplication process. I will definitely upload a videos on these uh, regarding the problem solving technique and of course keep watching this video and do let me know your recommendations. Take care. Bye. See you on the next class.